Hi everyone, welcome to AHR's IAS Institute. We are back again with the important questions for prelims 2020. So let us begin. Question number one. Arrange the following in the north to south direction. Number one. Nallamala Hills, Palconda Hills, Javadi Hills, Valiconda Hills. Number two. Palconda Hills, Javadi Hills, Valiconda Hills, Nallamala Hills. Number three. Palconda Hills, Javadi Hills, Nallamala Hills, Valiconda Hills. Number 4. Nalamala Hills, Palconda Hills, Valiconda Hills and Javadi Hills. The correct answer is Number 4. The peninsula block consists of relict and residual mountains like the above mentioned along with Alconda Range and Mahindragiri Hills. Let's move on to the next question. Question number 2. Consider the following statements. The dugong is largely dependent on seagrass communities for subsistence and is a strictly herbivorous mammal. Dugongs are found in warm coastal waters from the western Pacific Ocean to the eastern coast of Africa. The IUCN lists the dugong as a species vulnerable to extinction, while the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species bans the trade in it is derived products. Which of the following statements is or are incorrect? A. 2 and 3 only B. 1 and 3 only C. 3 only D. None of the above which means all of them are correct. And the correct answer is D. None which means all of the above three statements are correct. It is a species of sea cow found throughout the warm latitudes of the Indian and Western Pacific Ocean and it is mentioned in Wildlife Protection Act 1972, Schedule 1 and CITS, Appendix 1. The threats include incidental capture in fishing gear, shark nets for bather protection, hunting, boating activities, damage, modification or loss of habitat caused by human settlement on the coast, shipping, trawling, destructive fishing, natural processes, example cyclones and tsunamis. Further threats to seagrass include untreated sewage disposal, coasting dredging and reclamation, inshore commercial trawling, agricultural pollution. The chemical pollution such as oil spill and heavy metal load and most importantly climate change which is extreme weather events and high temperatures are the threats. Question number three. Which of the following statements is or are correct? The Central Administrative Tribunal was established by an Act of Parliament under the Administrative Tribunal Act. The Tribunal is headed by the Chairman who is normally a retired Chief Justice of a High Court. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. A. 1 only B. 2 only C. Both D. None of the above The answer is C. Both the Central Administrative Tribunal has been established under Article 323A of the Constitution for adjudication of disputes and complaints with respect to recruitment and conditions of service of persons appointed to public service and post in connection with the affairs of the Union or other authorities under the control of the government. The tribunal is guided by the principle of natural justice in deciding cases and is not bound by the procedure prescribed by the Civil Procedure Code. The orders of the Central Administrative Tribunal are challenged by way of writ petition under Article 226-227 of the Constitution before respective High Court in whose territorial jurisdiction the bench of the Tribunal is situated. Next question. Number 4. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Number 1. 44th Amendment Act increased the period of preventive detention from 3 months to 6 months but this provision has not yet been brought into force. Number two, Bengal State Prisoners Regulation led to the enactment of a law for preventive detention by the East India Company. Number three, National Security Act empowers the center specifically to detain a person to prevent him from acting in any manner prejudicial to national security. Choose the correct answer using the codes given below. A. 1 and 3 only. B. 2 only. C. 1 and 2 only. D. 1 only. The correct answer is B. 2 only. The reason the first statement is incorrect is because the 44th Amendment Act of 1978 has reduced the period of detention without obtaining the opinion of an advisory board from 3 to 2 months. 
However, this provision has not yet been brought into force, hence the original period of three months still continues. Also, such a person is detained in accordance with the provisions of any law made by the Parliament. Preventive detention laws in India date back to the early days of the colonial era when the Bengal Regulation Part 3 of 1818 was enacted to empower the government to arrest anyone for defence or maintenance of public order without giving the person recourse to judicial proceeding. A century later, the British government enacted the Rowlett Act of 1919 that allowed confinement of a suspect without trial. Post-independence, India got its first preventive detention rule when the government of Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru enacted the Preventive Detention Act of 1950, which expired in 1969. The NSA is a close iteration of the 1950 Act. The statement is incorrect because NSA empowers the centre or the state government to detain a person to prevent him from acting in any manner prejudicial to national security. Next question. Convalescent whole blood or plasma therapy is which of the following type of immunity? Number 1. Passive. Number 2. Innate. Number 3. Herd. Number 4. Adaptive. And the correct answer is number 1. Passive. The convalescent plasma therapy is a process in which blood plasma from a patient who has recovered from COVID-19 is infused into a critically ill patient so that the specific antibodies present in the blood of the recovered person can help fight the infection. Question here is, what are antibodies? So they are proteins in blood that fight specific bacteria and viruses. They are secreted by immune cells called B lymphocytes when they encounter an invader, such as a novel coronavirus. The immune system designs antibodies that are highly specific to each invading pathogen. A particular antibody and its partner virus are made for each other. Now, the therapy process the potential donor would examine and first, the swab test must be negative and the potential donor has to be declared as cured. Then the recovered person has to wait for about two weeks or else the potential donor should be asymptomatic for at least 20 days. Either of the two is mandatory. The therapy is akin to passive immunization and the effect lasts only up to the time the antibodies injected remain in the bloodstream. The protection given is temporary. For example, the mother transfers antibodies through breast milk to an infant before the child could build her own immunity. One key difference here between therapy and vaccine is that vaccination provides lifelong immunity. Hence, when a vaccine is administered, the immune system produces the antibodies. Thus, in a later date, when the vaccinated person is infected by the pathogen, the immune system releases the antibodies and neutralizes the infection. Next question. Ningaloo Canyons is located in which of the following country? 1. Australia 2. New Zealand C. Papua New Guinea 4. Malaysia Correct answer is A. 1. Australia An estimated 150 foot siphonophore, seemingly the longest animal ever recorded, was discovered during a month-long scientific expedition exploring the submarine canyons near Ningaloo. Additionally, up to 30 new underwater species were made by researchers from the Western Australian Museum. The discovery of the massive gelatinous string siphonophore, a floating colony of tiny individual zooids that clone themselves thousands of times into specialized bodies that string together to work as a team. They are the, they are the deepest fish and marine invertebrates ever recorded for the Western Australia. Number 7. Karuna is an initiative launched by which of the following ministry? 1. Ministry of Ayush 2. Ministry of Jal Shakti 3. Ministry of Home Affairs 4. None of the above The answer is 4. None of the above Karuna stands for Civil Services Association Reach to Support National Disasters Civil servants have launched a unique Karuna initiative to support government in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic Question number 8 Consider the following statements with reference to Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Number 1. He was part of the Bombay Presidency Committee that worked with the Simon Commission in 1925. Number 2. 
He established the Bahishkrit Ritakarini Sabha to promote education and socio-economic improvements among the Dalits. Number three, Mook Nayak, a Marathi fortnightly, was started by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Which of the following statements is or are correct? A. 1, 2 and 3, which is all 3. B. 2 and 3 only. C. 1 and 2 only. D. None of the above. The right answer is A. 1, 2, 3, which means all of the above statements are correct. Next question. Which of the following statements is or correct? Number 1. Cabinet Secretariat is the office which provides secretarial assistance to the cabinet and functions directly under the Prime Minister. Number 2. The term cabinet has not been defined in the Indian constitution. Number 3. The administrative head of the secretariat is the ex officio chairman of the civil services board. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. A. 1 only, B. 2 only, C. 1 and 3 only, D. 2 and 3 only. The correct answer is C. 1 and 3 only. The reason the second statement is incorrect because Article 352 defines the term cabinet as the council consisting of the prime minister and other ministers of cabinet rank. Please note the administrative head of the secretariat is the cabinet secretary who is also the ex officio chairman of the civil services board. Last question. Number 10. Consider the following statements. Global Microscope on Financial Inclusion Report is published by World Bank. The parameters across which countries are assessed government and policy support, products and outlets, stability and integrity, consumer protection and infrastructure. Which of the following statements is or are correct? A. Both. B. None. C. One only. D. Two only. The correct answer is D. Two only. The reason the first statement is incorrect is because Global Microscope and Financial Inclusion Report is published by Economist Intelligence Unit, the Research and Analysis Division of the Economist Group. That's all for today. Thank you for watching us. Please like, comment and share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. All the best. We'll see you very soon.